I was having a conversation about using Cypress.io. Now, I've been working in quality assurance for a long time, been building a lot of things with Selenium, and it seems like Cypress.io is the answer. Seems to be what the cool kids are using, and certainly, as you can see from the website, they believe they've evolved too. We're going to be working in JavaScript, and uh, we'll also be working with the Cypress recorder. One of the reasons I like Cypress is I have this idea that, you know, one of the things that makes automation difficult is that a engineer has to understand the business as well. Uh, with the Cypress recorder, I've had these ideas about one person could record, another person can finish the automation, uh, and that is just one of the many features that seems to make this tool very cool. In order to work with JavaScript, we're going to have to download and use some sort of integrated development environment, uh, a text editor that also allows us to compile, helps us autocomplete, and other things of that nature. There's a number of them that are available, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, Notepad++ on the right is probably not a true IDE, but it is such an amazing and functional tool that if you're not using it, just go ahead and download it anyways. Right now, Visual Studio Code seems to have a lot of popularity. Uh, for those that are familiar with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code is a rewrite of the editor. It's cross-platform, as you can see here, Windows, Linux, and Mac, uh, which separates it from its uh, bigger parent, Visual Studio. Uh, it seems to be in wide use, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. I also always want to give a plug to the folks over at JetBrains. That's WebStorm. Uh, it is a paid tool, but for an individual, I think it starts at something like $57, and it actually goes down each year, uh, which is kind of a cool little setup. They make a great IDE. Adam, I guess that's from the kids over at GitHub, but I see it mentioned a lot. Underneath that is Brackets, which I guess the design kids and Adobe uh, like to use. Uh, but again, we're going to use Visual Studio Code, so we'll go ahead and download that. Once we've got our executable installed, we'll launch it. Typical license agreement that nobody really reads the details about. I'm going to go ahead and install it with all the default options. And there we have it. Visual Studio Code is installed, and it's one of the several pieces we'll need in order to be JavaScript ready, at which point in time we'll talk about automation with Cypress.io. Now that we have Visual Studio Code installed, we need another major piece in order to be ready to develop in JavaScript. Most people think about JavaScript running in their browser, and it's true, it does that. To run outside of the browser, on a server, on your local machine, there's a tool called node.js. Now, when you go to do this, you should do this exact same search. What's the latest and greatest instructions? All right. a little official tutorial here. Take a look at it. Install Node.js for your platform. Takes me back uh, to the same Node.js website. Here's an installer. Let's just go ahead and download and install it. Once the download completes, of course, we'll launch it. Follow the wizard that is presented. Taking default options. I'm not going to install the C and C++ tools. I always wait till I have a need for it. It's a large installation. All right, we now have Node installed. We should spend a couple more seconds making sure that it installed correctly. 
Okay, so in particular dev space, we're going to make a folder for development. We can go ahead and bring up a terminal here. All right, so we're going to make a little empty directory, uh, which they call hello world. And I like to call get to the chopper. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! So we can move into the get to the chopper directory. Create a new little file. I'm going to save it in that directory. We just created call it app.js. Still a little coal, uh, a little code here. He said we don't want to say hello world. We want to say get to the chopper. And it looks like now we can just run it from the console. And it blows up. So Node wasn't recognized, probably because we just installed it and we haven't rebooted to pick up the path. All right, we've rebooted. See our file, right? There's our file. And now that we have rebooted the machine so that the new path variable for Node was picked up, the Node application reads the file and executes on it, which in this case outputs get to the chopper. Wait a minute. Really? Like, it needed some exclamations, right? Much better. What we've done here is installed Node along with Visual Studio Code and made sure that, well, it worked. Before getting started with Cypress and Visual Studio Code, let's install one more thing. Go to Google and search for the Cypress Recorder Chrome extension. The first link that comes up here for the extension, dated April 11, 2021, will take us to the Cypress Recorder by Kava Labs. I didn't actually realize the first time I ran into this that this was not created by the Cypress team. But I've used it before. I believe it to be safe. Let's go ahead and add it to Chrome. What is this extension going to do? It's going to allow us to record part of the test and then move that into Visual Studio Code and Cypress. Let's talk about actually installing Cypress. Let's go ahead and create a little directory here to do this. I'm going to add test1 onto it. We don't want to call it just Cypress because that will cause collision problems with the actual installation of, well, Cypress. One more thing, even though the command is right here on the home page, if you see it getting started, go take a read, right? Don't get distracted that the first thing it says is system requirements, and you're like, I'm good to go. Just scroll through. Okay, I'm not on Linux, so I'm going to scroll through. All right, it still says npm install, but oh, wait, this one down here has this extra save dev command. Well, all right, that's good to know. Oh, hey, what's this little box? Make sure you run npm init. Now, 
If you do a lot of JavaScript work, that's probably obvious to you. Uh, you know this will create the, uh, I guess, package file is the right way to say it with uh, some of the base information about the license, the author, and other things like that. But if you're new to Cypress and just getting this up and running quickly, it's really easy to miss that note, especially when on the main page they try to make you just type this command here. But if you're a novice, look for getting started pages, use them. They've got important things like npm init. Let's go ahead and run that now. Did not know there was a uh, capitalization constraint. I'll accept defaults where they're in existence. I haven't set up any mocha or anything, so I won't worry about the command. I don't have this in a Git repository yet. I don't need it to be searched by keywords. I do know who I am. I usually use MIT. Yep, that'll work. Now that we've got that, we can come up here, we can run this uh, command, which again, still is not the same as the command that was on the home page. So read those getting started pages. And there we go. All right, we're scrolling down now into the opening Cypress section, and uh, we can see you can use the npx command to open Cypress. So I did that uh, right here. Cypress went ahead and started up, saw that it was the first time starting up, uh, and actually opened a graphical UI and uh, created some files to get started. And I always like a program that does this sort of thing, right? Because if you don't know where you're getting started, uh, if, I mean, it gives you an obvious place. And there's like a button that says run 20 integration tests. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to give it access. That seems reasonable. Tests are loading here. Got its own little runner. Very interesting. tests have completed, but we can see that there's kind of a core functionality of the Cypress runner uh, that goes ahead and integrates and actually executes all of the different steps. Pretty cool. Why don't we see if we can write our own test and run that? 